computer. Hey y'all, how you doing? This is 101 Zoom with Kim. We're cross-stitching with Kim and she is Yay. <laughs> she's funny. Happy she, fingers, uh, happy fingers. Happy fingers. <laughs> she is going to show us everything we need to know and things we didn't need know we needed to know. So all right, Kim, let me make you big. I'm already big enough as it is, but okay. I can't. How do I? Oh, that's right. All right. Oh, perfect. Oh, right. wow. And you can see oh, um, this is a project that I've been working on for a while. I am very behind on it. It was a sal that was started a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I am not a, I'm a process stitcher. So I stitch because I enjoy the process. It is my Xanax. It's what keeps me from killing people. Um, it is my sanity. It's that kind of thing. A lot of people like to stitch for the, the progress of actually finishing something. If, if, if I finish it hot damn, if I don't, that's okay too. I'll get to it eventually. Um, this one is in particular, um, is on linen. Um, we're going to talk about some different types of fabrics. We're going to talk about different types of stitches, um, loop method, um, I am not going to show you guys how to do a French knot because I suck at those, but the wonderful Shalene is going to show how to do those. Um, cross stitch is a lot of fun and it's, it's one of those things that you can, you can do on as little or as big as budget as you want. Um, as a new cross stitcher, it is easy to jump off and buy all the stuff. Um, I've been stitching for off and on for 40 years and I still go and buy all the stuff because I can't help myself. It's my happy spot. So that's what I do. But let's get started with some basic stuff that I figured we could talk about. Um, some different things of what we use. Um, kind of thought we talk about, you know, basically cross stitch is our X's. You, um, you start in one spot, you go across, crisscross, crisscross, crisscross. That's cross stitch. That's why it's called cross stitch because it's a cross. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of, kind of tells you that way. Uh, we are going to talk about when you hear over one or over two, the different types of fabrics, things like that. And I apologize in advance. My cat is awake and she's messing in the vertical blinds because there's another cat outside. <laughs> so hopefully she won't get too noisy. Um, but I did uh, do this on some foam board so I could kind of show you guys with some yarn so you could see it and it would be big enough. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that goes along with, with doing this. Um, there are different kinds of hoops, things that you use to hold your fabric. We have everything from what they call a Q-snap, has these little who did these here, these little clamps that put it on there um, that hold your fabric in. I'll even show you how I can put fabric onto these different hoops so you can have an idea. Um, I particularly, I love using the Q-snaps um, they do tend to, st to stretch out this little clampy part. So um, if they start stretching out, I'll put this piece in the dishwasher and the top section or in the silverware section and it tightens it up a little bit. Um, if they're too loose, you can also put felt underneath there, just a small cut of felt and it works really well. And if they start getting grimy, put the whole damn thing in the dishwasher. Does it happen? When they think of cross stitch, just the, the wood hoop. Um, there's also plastic hoops. I don't even know where I came up with this one. I don't usually like using the wood hoops because they don't keep the tension that I want. Um, I just don't like them, but everybody has their own style. Um, if somebody said, what do you do if you don't have a dishwasher? Hot water. Um, I have seen, I've heard of people um, boiling them, putting them in hot water and boiling them oh, for a short time. Okay. Um, so there's different things that you can do. Um, this one is neat. I, I don't know where this one came from. I probably got it from somebody. You can see it's got like a little bit of a lead or of an edge to it. It's got a little edge there and it's, it snugs down a little bit better. Um, so you kind of have to open it up a little bit wider and then you tighten it down with the, ooh, with these little screws. Um, there's also what we call a scroll rod. And this is not loaded correctly. I'll tell you that right now because my fabric was so wide, I folded it in half and put it on there. Of course, you don't want to do that because then you'd be using two layers of thread of cloth, of fabric. But a scroll rod is basically two rods. 
a scroll rod and I can't really get this back far enough to be able to show you real well. And I wish you could really see the quality of this fabric. It's more of a, it's called, um, what is it called? Pumpkin, pumpkin king. But that looks more rust, but if it seems like if I, yeah, if you get it down there in that corner, that's more of the true color. It's really pretty. It's, it's gorgeous. So there are different frames and styles. So if you find one that you don't like, or you do like, um, this is one of my favorites. This is called a, uh, a spring hoop and it's, it's really easy to move. So you don't have the little screws to move stuff. And it makes it kind of nice because you can just squish it, move to your next little section and put it in there. And these come in different sizes. I have one that's like a two and a half, this one's a five, and then there's an eight. Um, and you can get these on Amazon, like a three pack for like 15 bucks. And they're, they're pretty awesome. I have this one in particular, um, actually not this one. I have a peachy colored one that I've had for probably about 15, 20 years. Um, so they've been around for a while. There's even some that have like a plasticky or rubbery um, grips. So it makes it a little bit different, but the Q-Snap and, and this one is usually my go-tos for my favorite ones to use. Do they have uh, bigger sizes than like the pink one you just have? Yeah, uh, the largest that I have seen, I think it's an eight inch. Let me grab, I, have, I actually have one right here. Um, and somehow I got it completely messed up on this. There we go. This one I don't like as much because it doesn't seem to hold as well, but you can't, if it's, if it's not giving you enough tension, you can always kind of stretch it out a little bit and then pop it back in there and it'll give more tension. So Thank you. that's as big of a one as I've ever seen, because really as you, if you get it any bigger, you're not gonna be able to get the tension that you want without really probably hurting somebody. <laughs> so, and I do not recommend the Michaels generic ones of like this size, they come in like a purple, there, these wires or the, this metal part is, is a lot heavier. Um, and I've actually broken nails off because it popped when I went to take it out. It, it's harder to control. My, my hands can't, can't handle it. Um, so I figured we could to also talk about different kinds of fabrics and things like that, um, the, of what people will look at and see. One of the most traditional, this is actually one of Kaya's pieces that she dyed, and I wish you could get the true color of it. It's, it's coming out really washed out. It's more of a really pretty grapey purple and some pinks and is a little bit of gray. gray. But um, when you see, when you have Ada, let me see if it'll zoom in. Come on, zoom. It was working so good earlier because I tested it out to make sure it would work right. Come on camera. Oh, there we go. So you'll see when you have Ada, you have like little threads that are going across this way and this way. So each one of those squares is like three or four threads going this way, three or four threads going this way. So it's interlocked and interwoven. And then you see it's got these little dots in between. Those are the spaces that you're stitching in. So Ada is kind of nice. It's usually a starter for most people because it's, um, it's easy to see this, the spots, the, the holes that you need to be stitching in. Um, it's fairly universal. Most of the time you can get it in basic colors from the store of like white, off-white, black, a pink, a, a light blue, that kind of thing. Occasionally you can get other colors, but there are people that, that dye fabric that you can get them from, or you can dye your own with like writ dye or if there's a lot of, that's a whole nother, that's a whole different thing. Um, but Ada is really great because it's, it's very well-defined. You can find the holes very easily and it's easy to stitch on. Um, this is a, a 14 count, so it's actually a larger, um, larger area that you're going to have to cover um, as you as your numbers go higher. So 14, the reason it gets the name 14 is because there's 14 of these squares per inch. If you have a 16, there's going to be 16 squares per inch. So that means your design is going to be smaller. If it's 20 squares, like a 20 count, that means there's going to be 20 of these in an, in an inch. So the higher the number, the smaller your project is going to be. Um, so from there, a lot of people will go to linen. Linen is a really pretty fabric. It's, it's a little bit more lightweight. And I didn't iron anything because, you know, that would require effort and that really... I'm not good at it. One of the things that people do not like about linen, especially some of the natural linens, is you get these slubs. So it kind of makes your, it's not as uniform as you would get with like um, an even weave or with Ada, but it's, it's a nice 
fabric to work with. It's a little bit softer a lot of times. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit more flexy. Now, different fabrics are gonna be different ways, different styles. I've had some that are more of a natural that are still kind of rough. This one's fairly soft. It also depends on the dyer and how what, what they use to dye with. Um, and you can give, and this is the same thing with the counts. Um, not, most of the time when you're using Ada, you're gonna go over one stitch. A lot of times with linen, if you want a smaller, more petite look, you're gonna go over one. But most of the time, from what I found, is a lot of people do over two with this, and we'll get into that here in a minute. Then going from linen, you, you go to, in this case, this one's a Lugana. It's an even weave. It's very similar to, come on, let's see if we can get this. It's very similar. It's kind of a mix between Ada and linen is honestly what a lot of people, you could tell, because it, it's evenly woven. It is a, a type of linen, but it is, it's evenly woven. So the holes are more uniform like you would have with Ada. Um, in this count, this is a 32. My happy spot is a 32 to a 36, which would equal out to like a, a 16 or an 18 count of Ada. Um, and not most of the time I do over two because my eyesight is not good enough to see over one. Um, and I don't like working over one, um, but you can get different types of fabrics um, and they all feel a little different. There's different dyers, there's different styles. I've got so many different colors and fabrics. I'm, I'm a member of a couple of different of, uh, floss clubs. So it makes it kind of nice to where I can um, have different things that I can work on and, and play with different for different patterns or I'll dye it if I want to. And another item you can get is perforated paper. Um, this is a, it's not super lightweight. It's got a little bit of, of weight to it, but it is perforated just like you would have with Ada. Um, but it's, it's actually paper. A lot of people will use these for bookmarks or for ornaments, um, mill hill kits, which you'll hear those a lot. They have like beads and stuff. Actually, this is a little mill hill key kit. Um, I haven't actually done this one because I hate beads. <laughs> I hate doing beads. I helped do a, um, a wedding veil and a wedding dress beading it. Um, and I'm, I'm traumatized for life. One day I'll get to this, but it's not going to be anytime soon, but they do come with all your little goodies and they are done on perforated paper. So you can kind of see it here. Um, so there's, there's different types of fabrics that you can use different styles, different counts and sizes. Um, different colors. If you can imagine it, it's going to be out there. Um, then we get to flosses. Flosses is a whole other thing. This is the great thing. It's just like with the fabric, you can make this project or these this craft and hobby be as expensive or as inexpensive as you want. Um, we do have stuff like this gorgeous. This is my mm. baby. I don't know what I'm going to do with it oh, yet, but I, I love have, have it. No, I do too. It is just absolutely gorgeous. This is um, hand dyed by Rolanda. She's on Etsy. Um, there are a lot of people that do over dyed flosses. Like here's one that's an over dyed floss and you can see it's got lighter and darker. Um, just like this has, has some variegation. This is a variegated floss. This is a DMC. Kim, sorry to interrupt. What does over dyed mean exactly? It means that instead of just like a regular dye, um, it's it's kind of like it sits longer. It's a little bit more vibrant. Okay. Um, and it causes it to have um, the variegations. Okay. Um, with the process of how like DMC does their floss, unless it's listed as a variegated, it's going to be very color consistent. Yeah. It's going to be the same color yellow all the way through, unless you get like a variegated. Okay. Uh, most of their okay. variegateds are going to be changing to different colors, red to yellow to blue to green or whatever. Um, but over dyes have lighter and darker spots with them a lot of times. And some of them, you don't see them as much. You don't see the difference in them as much. They're very subtle. Um, so, some are a little bit more pronounced like this. Um, I have like this one. This has got some blues, more blues and purples. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I haven't seen them up close in person so that really yeah. explains i can see the difference now and Thank like you. yeah here's another over dye so it's got some lighter and some darker let me see if i can get it to pull the color there you go so it's got lighter and darker in it so you get a little bit of different colorway and and there will be a difference of the way you stitch with these as well if you're wanting to get really the full effect of this over dyed floss you're going to want to go x by x instead of um 
doing, which is the English method versus the Danish method, which is we're doing one leg and then coming back with the other leg. Um, it means you'll use more floss, which is good and bad at the same time, but you get a better effect with it. And there's different ways that you can go. I've done, um, I was doing a sun or no, I was doing a moon and I had like a, a variegated, it had like a soft blue, a soft kind of not quite yellowy peachy kind of color. It was just very faint and, and a good white. And when I stitched a moon, it was a full circle. I actually stitched it going out in a circle. So it would give a better effect going around, but I did X by X. If you want a more subtle effect, then you can go the Danish method going one leg at a time and then going the other leg coming back. Um, so those are some of your, like your, your basic types of floss. Um, you also have things like the sulky, um, which sulky turns out to be, um, it's a little bit thicker. Come on, let's see if it'll zoom. Hello. Hello, camera. There we go. See, it's a little bit thicker. You don't separate this one like you would do with DMC. DMC has got six strands that are wrapped together to make your floss. You see it kind of like this. There's multiple strands and how it separates out there at the end. With this, this is more like a, it's almost the 12 weight sulky is like a, a, a thickness and a half. So instead of using two threads on which a lot of people use on a lot of cross stitch, you can just use one of the silky. So it makes it kind of nice. Um, you also have a twall. A twall is sparkly. It's not as oh, nice. bad to work with as some of the metallic. <coughs> Come Ooh, on. I like that. Let's see if it'll, I don't know why it's not zooming right. Cause I'm trying to show you cause it was working just perfect earlier, <laughs> but um, it's, it's just kind of nice because it's, it's wow. a little fluffier, um, but it's, it's got a nice sparkle to it and you can get all kinds of different colors in this. Um, and then you have metallics, which are also called the devil's pubes because they're horrible to work with. They're the worst thing on planet earth. They give a beautiful effect, but they suck is the nicest way I could put it. Um, but they do, they look really nice when they're stitched. They're just really rough. You have to shoot, use short lengths. Um, there's usually a lot of cussing involved, at least in my case. So I don't use them very often. They even have, um, this is glow in the dark, which of course you can't tell because it's light, but it is glow in the dark floss, which is just like regular DMC. It's just glows in the dark when you, you know, after it's, you let it kind of charge. Um, and I, oh, and then we have. I haven't played with these yet. I've been wanting to for a while. These are called treasure braid. These are very similar to using oh, something that people called um, Krynek, which is like a gold floss. It's like a metallic floss, which can be hard to work with. It's, I think it's a little bit easier than using this light effect stuff um, or whatever this, the metallic floss. These braids are a little bit easier. They're not strandable. So it's just the single um, but it gives a nice look without being too, as difficult to work with. And I got these <coughs> different stuff. The and treasure you have, braids you will like better than the Krynik. They're yeah, a lot better. That's what I've been told. You just don't get as much. That's right. the problem. Yeah. Um, and then in this case, this is a, a blending filament. Fine, and it's hard to, hard to get it to come on. But this is a blending filament that you actually put with other, or like a regular DMC. And you can kind of see what it is. I don't know why this is not doing its thing, but um, it's called a blending filament and it is from um, Krynik. Krynik is, is well known for a lot of their metallics. Um, but they, um, you put this with other floss and it helps, it, it pulls through, it makes it a little bit easier to deal with. Okay. So we'd use one strand of that and one strand of floss together? Uh-huh. Okay. And it gives a nice effect. It kind of gives that, you know, layers in some color. Like if you wanted to use it with a, like a, a, a yellow gold color, yellow gold. Oh, yeah. Paint, these would look pretty well together kind of coming through. So it would right. give you the shiny effect without the trouble of a full on chronic uh, thread oh, okay. or doing a full metallic thread. So that kind of gives you an idea of some, just some different flosses that you can use. I mean, there's so many different things and some are more expensive. Um, these little puppies get pricey and there's not that much there. Um, the, doing the sulky, 
I haven't really used a whole lot of them. I've got two projects, one I haven't started yet and one that I have that so far they've got, they've got really great coverage. Um, I don't seem to use as much because it's just one, the one strand and they last a pretty good long time and they've got some great colors. They don't have as much variety as you're gonna get with DMC or of course with your over dyed threads, but you still get a lot with it. Um, and then um, Marissa had talked about it. One of the things that she wished she had known before she got started. A lot of people will see over by DMC, the pearl cotton. And this pearl cotton, let me see if I can pull a little bit of it off. You can see that's a pretty good wide strand. Mm -hmm. Pearl cotton is actually more used for needlepoint and yes. for embroidery rather than um, regular cross stitch. And the reason being is because it is not dividable. It doesn't have the divides where you divide it into six pieces like you would with DMC. So it's a thicker thread. I mean, you could use it if you want a better coverage with some of your black. If you got to do a lot of black, I've heard of people doing pearl cotton instead um, to get decent coverage. It's just, it's a lot heavier. Um, and I just, I don't know. I've, I've used it for other stuff. I always, I always have some kind of floss of thread and everything around because I never know what craft project I'm going to do and what I'm going to need it for. So I've used this for different things for tying bows and different things, tying fabric off to kind of hide it away and then I could hot glue it. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you see it over with the DMC floss and you think, oh, okay, this is what I need to be using. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I have done with that thought. Oh, I need to get that sometime. Yeah. So I don't really. But, you know, it is nice. Like I said, if you've got a lot of black stitches and you just want the single strand, it's, it's a clean way to do it. Right. Um, it just may, may not be the same height um, as the rest of your stitches. So that's okay. one thing to keep in consideration. But it's one thing that's nice about it is it will give you dimension. So, you know, it's kind of things mm -hmm. to look at. What the, more, what the um, most expensive um, cross stitching um, yarn that you use the most? Um, well, I'd say like treasure braids and stuff are probably my most expensive, mm -hmm. but I don't use them as much. Okay. They're more for the for spot areas. So mm -hmm. really to, to the initial purchase is more expensive, but the cost per project, is, <coughs> that makes sense. Cause I don't use it a whole lot. I'm not a big on a lot of the metallics and stuff. That's mm -hmm. just not my style. Okay. Um, but I get like, this is, these are part of, or actually these aren't part of my subscription. This is another one. Um, I have like a subscription for um, like these guys. Mm -hmm. These are through Color and Cotton. And I get five of these a month. And I think it's about 20 bucks. Oh, so that's yeah, they are bad. pricey. But they're the length of what you would get with a regular skein of DMC. But they're gorgeous colors. And mm -hmm. what's nice is sometimes they're colors that I would not necessarily have purchased. And sometimes I've gone through, I had a gift card um, for crossstitchingsupplies.com, which is one of my favorite stores. I absolutely love them. Um, but they, um, I went through there and I was looking for a couple of specific ones and I saw some other ones and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get this one. Oh, I'm going to get this one. I don't know when or where I'll ever use them, but I have a buying problem. So <laughs> but I have them when I need them. Um, we so, all you know, have a buying problem. Yeah. Oh, I have a big time buying problem. Um, so that brings me now that we've kind of talked about floss. Now there's different kinds of floss storage. Um, some people like to use the floss drops, which this is a good example of a basic floss drop. This one comes directly from color and cotton. Um, because it's my club, I always mark on the back when I got it. So I know which club it was. I don't know why. I just, I like kind of keeping track of when I got it. And if I'm looking for something specific, um, there's those kind of floss drops. Some people do, a girlfriend of mine got me these. I thought these were so cute. These are some cute little floss drops and you do, you know, you hang them on there the same way. And then it's got this cute little card and this cute little hudakai. I don't know what that's called. Just a little guy there. Um, and a lot of people will do their flosses like that. Um, some people will store their, their floss everyday for loss like that or for a project. Like in this case, I have these flosses from a project. I left them on the card. My little cheat though, is I put a second little hole right here. This is my main color, my main flosses. Let me get to a lighter one where you can actually, it might actually show it a little bit better. But I, this is the main part, the mountain mist. And then when I have my little pieces that I pull out from the strands, 
like these, this is multiple six strands. When I pull a single set of six off and I start peeling them out, I'll put them in this other little side hole so they don't get mixed up with these. That's just my little cheat. So if I'm just looking for one single piece, I can just snag it from here instead of having to worry about the whole thing. And I've gotten to where I started doing that on all of mine. Um, but this is, these are all flosses from a specific, for a specific kit that I'm working on or a specific pattern that I'm working on. And um, a friend of mine had given me this cute little, little tchotchkes that go on here. I just thought mm -hmm. they were neat. And so I just put them on there to keep them on together. It's pretty. It's and I like very it. cute. So, just like this one, it's pretty. Um, and there's um, a lot of people will use bobbins. I use bobbins a lot. Um, and sometimes I'll put them on like these kind of rings. I've also got these little flexi rings like this that I'll put stuff on. Um, if I'm going to be putting them um, in a bag with one of my project bags, a lot of times I'll put them on these flexi rings because they're they flex and so it makes it a little easier to put them on there and hold on to them. But you can take your floss and put them on like a bobbin. This is what I do. Most of my regular DMC flosses are on bobbins, and I I personally take. I don't use the stickers. I don't write on them. Actually, the number would end up being like this because this is what, how it came off of there. Um, I actually use the, the label because I don't want to have to write on the thing because the stickers never stay on. Tape doesn't stay on. Marker will rub off. This is the surefire way and I'm not adding anything extra to it. And I did, I've, I've actually done a, a picture thing of it. Um, because I have people that ask me about it all the time. So I went ahead and grabbed it. So I take a manual, oh, no, sorry. That's not it, Me. there we go. So I just fold my little label and then I put it on there, wrap and just kind of take it, wrap the back piece around and then wrap the, the floss around it. So that's just the way that I do it and it holds it on there. And when I run out of floss, I just grab that label and I know what I need to replace in my stash. Because what I usually do is I'll put that label in my phone case so that I have it for later, or I'll take a picture of it so I know what I need to buy later. So it's just a nice way to do it without having extra supplies. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, well, this other picture is perfect. I, I don't wind mine usually by hand. I took a manual winder and I take it apart because I'm lazy. <laughs> So I snap this little sucker apart. Normally it'll sit like on the edge of your, your, uh, your container, your little plastic container that you put your floss in and you can manually, want. I'm, I'm, I'm too lazy to do that. So I have this little piece that I have pulled apart and I will stick that in my drill. Uh-oh, where did it go? I just took, I just had this picture, sorry. Let me grab it real quick. I will put it in my drill and make my life so much easier. Do it like that Perfect. and just wind it and it goes so much faster. It's like the best thing ever. That's cool. Yeah, so it's, it makes it really nice. And it's, it's really e actually pretty easy to do it. If you take off your, actually I'll, sh I'll show you how to, to, to wrap it on one of these real quick since I, I show you. Well, there's an excuse to get the drill. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not going to pull the drill up. Oh, yeah. I, hey, I need I, a drill very badly now. I, yeah. what, one of the things you can do I personally kind of like to pull it apart and just lightly put it in a because occasionally you can get it to where it'll stay on your wrist and you can pull it and it'll pull just fine. But every time I get cocky that that's going to work, it screws up. Mm -hmm. So I, I usually don't do that. But I will take my label. So here's my little label and I use my nail and I kind of flatten out one side and I flatten out the other side to where now I can see my number. And on your DM, I don't know if it'll let me show. I'm, I'm using the DMC ones and it's got like a line here and it says the DMC label. I usually just put my little guy right up here. And I know it's kind of, kind of sort of cover that over that corner, but I fold it under where it creates an angle and then I tuck it behind just like that. Okay. And I'll hold it with the, the, my two fingers like this to make it the easiest. And then I, let's see if I can do this and still do it on the camera. I use, I have to use multiple fingers to do this, but I kind of hold it on there and I wrap it around 
I'll usually, even if I'm doing it on the drill, I'll wrap it a few times and then I'll put it in my little keeper for my drill and then zoop and it goes. And then it'll hold this on here because it's covering from both sides. Right. So then I have my label on there and I can wind it, whether I'm manually winding or winding with the drill. What's well, that? <laughs> And if you want to get really cute, there are other kind of really awesome little um, um, bobbins. I couldn't think of the word. Um, instead of like these little plastic ones, look at this little guy. I got him. Oh, look kid. at him. He's not the most adorable. Oh, little my <laughs> so, I mean, and there's all kinds. Um, there are some that are not appropriate. Um, mm -hmm. They are um, all kinds of shapes. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> all kinds of shapes that you can imagine out there um and, and also including like if you're doing like your flosses like this you can also do this is another little way to hold your floss if you have specific colors you can put them on here and it makes it nice it's just a little floss keeper um, and you can hang it off there and put it in your back this one was a gift from somebody and, and i've used it a few times when i just have a handful of colors that i'm working on that are very specific and you can you can definitely tell what they are um, so it makes it kind of nice and it's just a nice way and it's a cute way I mean you can find these all in Etsy um, I've got a big one that's a Florida Lee and it's it's beautiful and I love it and, and a lot of times they are wood you can get them in acrylic you can make your own I have um, and sometimes they'll even come in kits this is one that I got with my caliper cross stitch I cheated and I put this I drew, drew the symbol so I didn't have to go back and look again because I'm lazy <laughs> but it's the same way. It does get a little messy sometimes when you have them, but it's a good way to keep up with your flosses. So and you can do this with an index card. So it's like whatever you want to do with it to keep your stuff together, whatever works, go for it. Okay, so in, also in dealing with floss, sometimes you will get to the point where your floss gets a little frayed. Um, there's a lot of projects or products that you can use. Um, I just had one of them. Um, some people have like wax. This is like a little wax guy. It's natural beeswax thread conditioner. You don't have to use thread conditioner. I do sometimes, especially if my floss is starting to get a little raggedy and I'm still trying to make use of it. And this is just beeswax and they come in different shapes. Some of them are just a circle or whatever. Some of them are a container and you can run your floss over them and it'll work really well. Um, a girlfriend of mine does them. She's got the cutest little hedgehog. He's like all bumpy that you can use. Um, they also have um, man-made thread magic is one and it's this stuff it's this gooey stuff and what's nice is you can reshape it if it gets out of whack but it's got these little things little all the way around those little notches and what I do is I put my thread across it and I put the lid on and I will pull it through because it kind of helps push the thread through it and it'll kind of condition your thread um, it doesn't really I haven't really found that it leaves enough of a residue to cause dirt or anything, same with beeswax, but it's it will work to kind of, especially when you have some of those edges that are a little frayed or they're a little wrinkledy, it kind of helps mold them a little bit better. You do not want to use them on a twall because it'll take away the fluff of a twall. Um, I had a friend do that and it was not pretty. It was not an attractive thing, but um, that's something that a lot of people will use. Um, so, I mean, it just kind of depends on what you want to do. So another thing that we have um, when you're talking about cross stitch <coughs> are needles. Needles are a big thing. Um, majority of people that I know use tapestry needles. And the reason you use tapestry needles instead of an embroidery needle, an embroidery needle has got a sharp point on it. Um, I don't like using embroidery needles because I like my fingertips and I really don't want blood on my project. So I use tapestry needles, which are rounded. And there are different sizes of embroidery needles. Um, usually the ones that most <coughs> people see in the stores are 24, 26, and 28. 24 is usually used on like a 14 to 16 count. When you get to 18 to 20, you're looking at 26 and 28 for the smaller counts. Or like, or the, the higher count fabric, like um, 36s and things like that. I, you can use a 26 or a 28. I, my favorite usually is a 28 for most of my higher count linen because it just feels better. 
Um, but that's just my personal and you'll figure out what works for you. If you're having a hard time getting your needle through, if you feel like you're having to push it through, try a smaller needle because that may be the problem and it will make your stitching much more enjoyable. I have been working on my Princess Leia project for a hundred years and I've been on 14 count Ada and I changed to a different needle and I actually don't mind stitching on it as much. It is still going to take me a hundred years to do it. But still, because it's three colors and it makes me, it does not make me happy. It does not bring me joy. There's another kind of needle that I absolutely love. And these are ball tip needles. And you see that? Mm -hmm. I love them things. These are, and I, I actually just got a couple more. These like. are the Sullivan's Easy, Easy Guide. Um, <coughs> they're expensive. Mm -hmm. This this is like eight and a half bucks for these two. Mm -hmm. oh, but I love them. I love them. I love them. Um, they are really great. Um, there's something amazing about them that especially like if you're working on Ada, you can take your, your regular needle and you can hit like you're going to try to push it through and it will bounce back a lot of times. Nine out of 10 times with these, it's going to pop right through that fabric. It's going to find the hole and slide right in. It is just, it's magic. It's just wonderful. So, but that's kind of what they look like. So I wanted you guys to be able to see that's what they, the so little cool. Yeah, they're, pre they're pretty neat. So, um, and you can, I mean, there's, there's so many different kinds of needles. Um, I have, like, here's the difference of some different sizes of needles. Oh, yay, it zoomed in. So I've got like this big boy right here. That's, that's one of my 24s. They're different sizes, different, you know, lengths. Um, let's see, this one I know is my ball tip just because I have it off to the side. It's got to also has a smaller eye to it than some of the others. Um, so what but, are um, bowl pen, uh, bowl pen needle exactly? Is it just because the way the needle is? Because it's got the ball at the tip, just like that picture I was just showing. <coughs> okay. Yeah, see, it's got that little ball at the tip. Yeah. And what that does is it just kind of helps find the hole for the fabric and it just slides right in. Okay, cool. Now, if you're going to put, when you're going to put your thread through at the end, yeah, uh, when you're getting ready to tuck your, the end of your tail, they aren't as easy to tuck your tails underneath mm. on the back, but it is, it is doable. Um, a regular needle mm. is better for that a lot of times, but you get used to it and you, you find what works for you. Um, I do suggest finding some kind of a, um, there's like needle keepers. I've got like this one that I keep like a whole bunch of my needles in. I know some, I think Tammy gave this to me for Christmas or my birthday or something. And I've got a bunch of needles in here and I can usually tell what needles they are just by looking at them, the eyes and stuff, just because I've been stitching with them for so long. Um, I keep this one in my little, my little jar. This is actually, a, I thought this was the QC. It's a little felt ball glued onto a uh, golf tee. <laughs> And it is the best thing. It's just a little, because I have my I have my little jar of tools here um, that I keep it by my desktop. And it's got, it's just a flower frog and I use it for my ort jar. And somebody had asked me before, what is an ort jar? <laughs> or what is an ort? An ort is known as an old raggedy thread. These are the cutoffs. These are the end pieces from your projects. Um, a lot of people just chunk them. I personally put them in my ort jar because I have about given myself a heart attack. I was walking through one morning, was not paying attention, looked down and I had my readers on. So I, I, it was fuzzy go looking down and it was perfect going straight. And all I saw was this dark blob on the rug. After me screaming bloody murder, jumping up and down and going to grab a flip flop to hit it, I realized it was actually a wad of thread <laughs> that was on the floor. Um, and I have a cat, so my cat likes to eat stuff. So I try to keep my threads up. Plus they don't stick to my clothes. I, although I still get random threads to stick to all of my laundry somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I personally will take them out and put them in a Ziploc bag, squish out the air. Cause I'll use these to fill pillows, um, the score news, whatever. Um, a girlfriend of mine, she made this for me. It's a little pillow, pin cushion. And she actually used some of the threads are actually to the back that she used on this, she used them to the back. So they were extra filling. Nice. So, 
And some people will take them at the end of the year, what are all the ones that they've been saving in an ore jar. Some people will put them in a wine bottle to do them. Some people will take them and put them like in a jar or whatever. And they'll put them in one of those enclosed um, glass balls and hang them up on their tree and write the year. So they can kind of look back at that and remember the projects that they were working on. Like I said, I just keep mine in here and I've used, I pull them out when I need them to stuff stuff. So, but you can throw them away. Just whatever you do, do not put them out for the birds. They are not safe for the birds. They can get wrapped around the birds' legs and, and the, the baby birds' necks and all that other kind of stuff. It's not safe. So please do not do that. No matter what people say, it's not safe to do that. That is an old wives' tale. Yeah, so. I know a lot of my cross stitch friends, they've always put it out for the birds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they and put they it in their nest. It, it causes a lot of problems to do that, unfortunately. I mean, and it does for some, you know, there, there may be some smarter than other birds, just like people, but, you know. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, talking about, we were talking about uh, thread or uh, fabric earlier. Um, there's different ways that you can do your fabric to finish the edges. I have one piece here. I don't know if y'all saw it a while ago, but this is one that has not had finished edges on it. And so it's starting to pull out. Um, you can either take and you the, the way that you used to do was we would take masking tape and put over it. That is not a good thing because masking tape leaves residue. And when you have a project you don't pick up for 20 years, you may not get that masking tape back off there. Um, yeah, I've, I've done that. Um, they have this really great stuff called fray check. It's a liquid. It's kind of like basically fabric super glue. You put it around the edges, lightly put it around the edges. Don't lay it on something, pick it up, put it around the edges and, you know, let it dry. Um, you can do that. You can sew it a lot of, when you get fabric, a lot of times from different dyers, they will have searched the edges. Um, I actually will take some times and use um, an interlock stitch when I'm cutting a piece and we'll interlock around the edges because um, I don't have a serger because I'm not that fancy. One day, one day I can afford one. Um, but what, one of the things, oh, when we were also talking about, um, fabric sizes, there's, there's a really cool thing. This one's a cross stitch key. And what's nice about it is it gives you a lot of different things. It's got references like for 14 to 30 or 14 or 32 count use two strands, 36 to 40 count use one strand. That's a suggestion. You don't have to do that. I use two strands on 36 because that's what I like. I like my stitches fuller. Um, it just kind of gives you an, a suggested needle size to use for different fabrics. And then it has this great little uh, count right here. So it gives you, so for 14 count, it means there's 14 of those little squares that'll line up. Come on, let's see if it'll zoom. Zoom. There we go. So to line up, see how those are lining up with the holes? So that lets me know it's 14 count. If it was 16 count or something like that, it'll do these other ones. So that kind of shows you there's 32 of those to an inch, 28, 25, that kind of thing. And if you're doing a corner start, this is really freaking fantastic to do these little corner guides. Um, you can do it a couple of different ways. I usually do mine this way with my corner this way. So I can see where it is. I have a couple of ladies that told me I was doing it wrong and then I need to do it from here. But I'm, for me, it's harder to see that way. I go because it's got a hole and it tells me, okay, this is three inches in, three inches from the top, three inches from the side. And that's where I need to do my, and I'll run a needle through so I can tell where I need to do it. And where do you, you do want to leave some, huh? Where do you get those? Um, this one, I found it online. It's just called a cross stitch key. It's so Emma. But one, it's a two, great three, little overall. Awesome. Huh? One, two, three stitch has awesome. them. Yeah, they probably do. Um, that or cross stitching supplies. Um, any, a lot of the different shops will have them too. Um, but it's nice because it's got this little three inch ruler. It's got the different pieces and it makes it, it's just kind of a good overall guide. And it's good straight edge. Um, and it's nice and thick. Um, so it's just, it's a handy thing to have. It's a good, just quick, easy. Um, but it's, it's a nice way to be able to figure out. Now, I, I'm, depending on how, because I usually don't send my stuff out to be framed because I'm, I'm too cheap. 
<laughs> and most of my stuff is not of the level to send out to be framed. One of these days when I finish my long dog, well, actually when I start it and finish it, I probably will get it framed. Um, it'll probably take me 20 years to finish it. So I've got plenty of time to save up to get it framed. Framing is expensive. <laughs> um, I usually don't do a very big um, corner or a, bit, a very big uh, allowance um, because I'm stingy with my fabric. <laughs> I'm also a floss miser, so I will dig in my ore jar. If I need three stitches, I will dig in my ore jar and look for a piece that's long enough to do my last three stitches because I'm just tight that way. I can't stand it. I play thread chicken where you try to get the smallest little tail that you can. Oh my have. God, I do that all the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm a total thread miser. I always have been. I don't, I don't know why. That's just me. Question. Um, yes. Um, people have also said that you can take, um, pinking shears, I believe they're called along this, along the, the edge. You can, um, it works better on Ada than on linen. Um, it still makes a hell of a mess and it's still going to fray. It's still going to, so use fray check. Okay. I mean, it depends on now, if you're going to be putting it in like a, a frame like this, and it's going to stay pretty much in one area for a while, mm -hmm. you, it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, if you start noticing it fraying a lot, then do some about it. You can even do like a, you can look up online a blanket stitch and do a blanket stitch around the edge. It's just something to kind of keep that together. You can, if you have a sewing machine, just do a zigzag stitch around the, kind of towards the edge and, and you're fine with that. It's just something to keep it from fraying too much so that you don't lose your fabric. Um, mm -hmm. I do suggest most of the time doing something, although a lot of times I don't, I mean, on this one, I never did, but I never have had a lot of fraying either. I'm, I'm a little bit more of a rebel when it comes to doing stuff. I don't do the way everybody says it should be done. I just do however I want to do it. And it's going to be what it's going to be. That has kicked me in the butt sometimes because I've, I've cut too small of an area here and it's shot me in the butt. <laughs> but <laughs> Um, and that's why a lot for me personally, I don't usually cut my fabric. If I'm, even if I'm only using this small little piece, I usually don't cut the, my fabric off until I'm completely done with it mm -hmm. because I will screw up because I'm one of those people that, you know, they say measure twice, cut once mm -hmm. I'm measure once cut three times because I've jacked something up because I didn't pay attention. Um, but, you know, some of my worst mistakes have turned into some of my best projects. So, you know, it is what it is. You just kind of, you got to be willing to roll with it. Um, I, I personally suggest at least two inches for the average person to do. Um, so two inches of allowance there. Um, some people suggest three. And if you're doing like a fancy framing, they'll suggest three inches here and then maybe another inch for your framing. So if you want to see some of your fabric, depends on how you want to do your framing. It's your personal option. Yeah. Um, I don't do anything of the quality that's ever probably that it, my stuff will probably end up in the trash can or a thrift store once I die. So it's not, I don't have any kids to leave it to. It's not heirloom stuff that I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. I just do, I stitch because I, I love it. Um, it, it brings me joy. Now, can you use that card to find the middle of your, no, no. no. Okay. Um, the easiest way to do your middle is, okay, first of all, I'll tell you, there are some of the best, absolutely best. The, there's a website. The one that I always use is Yarn Tree. Okay. It is a cross-stitch calculator. So this cross-stitch, cal oh, get back here. This cross-stitch calculator is really awesome. Let's see if I can get my light out of the way. What's really great about this see if I could do this. Ooh, and I hope I don't make you guys sick with me doing that. So the great thing about this cross stitch calculator, this will tell you. So let's say, you know, if you've got a pattern, let's say it is um, it, a lot of times on a pattern, it'll tell you how many wide the stitches are. So let me show you one so you can get a better idea of what, okay. of what we're talking about. Thank you for showing me. Oh, no problem. So in this case, don't look at my pattern. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be, we're all beginners. We're not going to be able to do that like slickly split. <laughs> Let's see. And of course, this one's not telling me what the, the, the size is. A lot of times on your cross stitch patterns, it will tell you the, um, 
size of the pattern. Okay, like here, like this one is for my uh, quilting bait. It'll tell me that it's 133 wide by 110 high. So that's 133 stitches or 133 X's, blocks, whatever you want to look at, wide. So this way, and then 110 high. So let's use that. Um, so we want the 133 wide by 110 high. And in my case, the fabric that I'm using to work on is a 32 count fabric. This is what it actually looks like. It's a 32 count fabric that I'm using. So for me to figure out what size, see, I did leave a little bit more allowance on this one because I really like this one. I'm going to figure out what I want to do with it. I, I, I have no idea what's going to happen with it, but I have a whole drawer of finished stuff. I don't know what's ever going to happen with it. But in this case, I know that this fabric is um, 32 count fabric. So I put 32. And in this case, it asks you number of threads each X covers. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, with linen, you, uh, most of the time, most people will do over two. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. If it's Ada, you, it's over one. In this case, since I'm doing linen, it's over two. And it asks you for fabric on each side of the border and fabric for each side for finishing. That's where I was talking about, like you may have two inches for your, that's gonna be outside of your border. And then you want, like when you frame it, you wanna have at least an inch of your pretty fabric showing outside of that when you frame it. So this mm -hmm. will give you an idea of what you need to do. So in this case, I left it at two and two and I hit calculate size. And this will tell me that in order to do this, that my stitched area is gonna be eight and three eighths inch wide by eight or six and seven eighths inches high. And my fabric size needs to be 16 and a half by 15 because I had four inches listed as the outside border mm, two for border and right. two for the fabric showing right. and it'll even tell you i suggest using two strands of floss for stitching and for back stitching using one strand of floss so that's the nice thing about this calculator is you don't have to do math it does everything for you i could do the math don't ask me the formula because i don't remember it because i cheat and i do this because my math teacher lied and said that i would not have a calculator with me at all times she lied i do i have one all the time <laughs> so, and I have a computer, so it does all this crap for me. So this is a good way to do it, to kind of figure out what size fabric you need in the first place. And so that you can accurately count what you need and you can change it. Like, let's say I change my mind. I was like, okay, I don't really want to do that on linen. I really want to do that on, um, let's do it on, I want to do it on 14 count Ada. So I'm going to change it to 14 threads per inch. And I'm going to change the number of X's it covers to one. And so remember that went from like, it was like eight and seven eighths by six and seven eighths, but to change it to 14 count for the same project, it changed it to where the stitched area is nine and a half inches by seven and seven, eight inches. So it's going to be a lot bigger. Mm, right. So it gives you an idea, it even tells you the suggested size for the tapestry needle, which it even tells me it's a 24. So, I mean, it gives you a lot of things there and it's a great tool for when you first start. So you don't have to try to do the math. But like I said, always measure, 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 and then cut. Measure at least five times and then cut because otherwise you'll be cussing more times than, than anything. <laughs> um, in this case, I have a lot more extra over here, but it's just the way it felt it landed on the big piece of fabric. And I, this is what I was talking about, the interlock. I just did an interlock, it's still fuzzing out but I haven't just ripped off. A, well, and I, did, I can't sew a straight edge, as you can tell. I just really jacked that up. I tried to decide to eyeball it off the fold of the fabric. That's what happens when I try to eyeball stuff. It's not pretty, but that's why it's the extra edge and I don't have to worry about it. Um, let's see. Oh, and we were talking about like the small hoop. This is my small hoop. My little baby. Oh, how cute it is. <laughs> but it works really good because like this one is I have little motifs that I'm working on at a time, these different little okay. sections so I can pick it up and move it as I need to. And it makes it a lot easier. So. And that doesn't damage the stitches underneath them? Nope. Okay. Now I do suggest that. if you're going to use a Q-snap and you're going to be in the using the Q-snap for a while to put felt underneath there. Mm -hmm. Um, because that'll help cushion your, your stitches, okay. this little piece of felt. 
So um, just because a Q-snap will leave it on there for a while. And you can even do that. You can even use a piece of felt if you notice that it is kind of flattening your stitches. Um, use a piece of felt underneath the edge when you go to put your hoop on and that will help cushion it a little bit. All right. Just one of those little handy dandy little guides. But um, so Robert, if you're going, especially if you're trying to do a center start, let's say this is the, the size of the, maybe this is a slightly oversized of what I need for my fabric. Okay. Um, but let's say my, my pattern is gonna cover the majority of this piece. Let's say I kind of cut it to be within the bounds of what I needed. Mm -hmm. My best suggestion, if you're wanting to start a, a center start, fold it over, crease pretty good, use your finger, just rub it across a couple of times, open it up, fold it again, kind of crease right there, and there's your middle, it's right smack dab. Okay. You can, you can measure it with a tape measure. Yeah. But that that's the easiest way. I don't know if you can kind of see the shadow a little bit right there. Yeah, I can see the shadow of it. Yeah. And and what I sometimes what I'll do is I'll take an extra piece of um something with a, a little bit different color floss. I'm over here trying to show my my laptop is over here. <laughs> and I keep on trying to show you guys by looking at my you know my laptop. And and obviously you can't see that. <laughs> but a lot of times if once I find my center I will just take for just a shortcut and I will find the closest center stitch and I will just tag it with a piece of thread like that and then and just leave it pull there it out until I start stitching and then once I get a couple of stitches in then I'll yank that out oh, and you can okay. use them from your art jar too that's what another another good reason for your art jar crystal um, I will even take sometimes when I'm doing a project that is directional because <laughs> I'm really bad sometimes about changing my, moving my fabric and it, it'll be like something that is um, very directional. I'll put, I'll take my extra, oh, I didn't do it on this one. I thought I did. I have one. What of do you mean that, directional? I'm, I missed that. Well, like if you're, if your pattern, let's see, I'm trying to find one that I did it on. Oh no, memento. Let me see. Okay. I've got some projects over here beside me. I was trying to make sure I had different stuff so that I could show you guys different things if you need me. Aha. This would be a good one. Okay. So this project goes all the way around in different areas. And do oh, wait a minute. Oh, there it is. Okay. I was like, oh no, I can't find it. Oh, let me take this needle out of here so I'm not looking for it later. Because I'm not using this fabric yet. <laughs> oh, one of those so, tiny villages. Yeah, this is this is one of the um this is uh Carol Manning's uh winter or gingerbread village. And okay. so since I'm going in these different directions, it's really important to mark where, where your top is. So I use I just had this gold floss. This is some of that. Krynic that I had just a little piece left over from something else and I made an arrow pointing up yep I've That's seen that so some people will take and notch like the corner of this fabric um, or do something they'll put a bit like a big x up in the top corner up here so they always remember what is their top yeah corner. I do the notch yeah yep. So, you know, it's just whatever works because that's very important because you want to keep your stuff going the right way. Okay. And the reason I say that is because you want your X's to go in the same direction every time. Yeah. You want, you want all your bottom legs to go one way and you want all your top legs to go another way. Whether you choose whichever direction you choose for them to go, they need to be consistent that way. And what, and the reason I find this so funny, especially on this piece, and I did not take it out. When I was working on this part, this is the top. So I had it stitched like this. Well, and when I was going down here on the side, when I started doing this, this color brown, this darker brown, mm -hmm. I flipped it this way. Oh, you didn't. So oh, no. These stitches are going in the wrong direction. Oh. Yeah. oh, no. But I caught it. And so these brown ones, I left going the wrong way, but everything else I did the right way. And it's actually kind of neat because it gives it a little texture. Mm -hmm. It makes it kind of stand out. No doubt. Um, and that's that's my mental you screwed up and I'm not taking it out. Plus, I've got a lot of crap that's crossed over it, so I'm not good. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, but that's that's one of those things that helps because you need to stay directional. So I have I've been trying okay. to stitch these on the side. So it makes me, 
yeah, it, there's been a lot of cussing. Oh, and this is one of the fabrics I was going to tell you. This is opalescent. See how it's got the shinies? Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. <clears throat> but I something love. to keep in mind yeah. when you work with opalescence is that that little pretty shiny is like a piece of plastic and it's got sharp edges. Okay. So when you're working with some of this, um, especially if it's, if it's Ada, this is, this is a linen, but if it's an Ada and a, the Ada is already stiff and then you add opalescent, you may want to use shorter lengths of floss because this is harder that opalescent and the harder, the stiffer Ada is tough on your floss and it'll shred it. And it'll make it look really, really fuzzy before it really needs to. So that's just one of those things to kind of keep in mind. But I have a quick question about that before you put it away. Yes. How do you do the sides? I mean, do you put your little I just leave it, I just leave it sitting this way. And, and I work so my pattern see. going this way. Oh, okay. So, so you I mean you still stitch up. in it. It was very difficult for me to not turn it because I wanted yeah. that's how I was. That's exactly at. what I would do. So it's, I had to mentally just tell myself, okay, you can't do that. And that's where that, that arrow comes in really. Plus it reminds you where you're at. I have, I, I've got a pattern that I'm working on. It's an ink circle design and it, it is, it's the same going all the way around. And so it's nice to be able to know where you're at. So you can figure out where you are on your pattern. Um, Marissa had a pattern that she was doing and she, she didn't mark the corner. It was, what was the Quaker South? And she didn't mark the corner. So instead of putting um, a piece that was supposed to go here, she put it here instead. Mm. And so it, ja it, it messed up her motifs. So she just had to kind of redo some different stuff and change it up a little bit. I found on that Ukrainian, um, the one that you did that a lot of us did, uh, I found myself wanting to turn it all the time too. And yes. Don't turn it. Don't turn it, sir. Don't, don't turn, turn it. it. Yep. Yeah. Don't turn it. And I did that with this one too. I think that was the one I was looking for the, the red S, but I'd already finished it. But yeah, is that, um, this is that is, a pin cushion? Yes, it's called a biscornu. And the reason it's called a biscornu, a biscornu, I think I read right, it means um, lopsided or awkward edge or something like that. Oh. So it's basically taking two squares and instead of putting them like this together, you turn them and put them together like this. Oh. So that's how you get the edge. So I just repeated I like that. the corners. Because you're not really going to see the bottom. I didn't worry about oh. putting anything on the bottom. I just did those corners so that they would repeat. Oh. I always I wondered what a biscornu was. I had no idea. Yeah, it's just a little pin cushion. I mean, and there's different kinds. I mean, this is actually called a biscornu because of the, the style that it is like this. Mm -hmm. Like this is just a regular little pin cushion. It's a what little pin cushion or pillow. What did, I, what did I put in it? This is just, it's just got polyfill in it. Oh, okay. And this has got polyfill. A friend of mine made this for me because I love flamingos. And I'm hoping, let's see if I see if it look at the, her stitches. Are they not just wow? Her stitching. I want to be her when I grow up. Her stitching <laughs> it's all is perfect. just Holy it's cow. beautiful. Yeah, it is amazing. Her stitching is just immaculate. And she hand sewed the whole thing. People so put walnut shells too, I've heard on yeah. different YouTube channels. But yeah, she knows I like flamingos, so she made that for me. It's cool. That's pretty. And she put the little pins in it, like at the next. She said that's, they've got little jewelry on. I like that. So, so yeah, I'll use this as a pin cushion, probably. Um, I don't know. I may just sit there because I, I just really like it. I think it's pretty. So it's very pretty. But it's a lot of fun. So um, let's get to some of the actual stitching. So I did this. This is my little cheat. So I figured it'd be a good way to actually show you what it looks like. Sorry, I'm having to get something to drink. Dr. Pepper is the best. And I'm using a big hawk and darning needle. So um, the way we were talking about before, cross stitch is just a matter of doing X's. Um, and you've heard me talk about over one. This is over one. So you have like the four corners of like the four holes like we saw in the Ada fabric. Um, and with Ada fabric, you actually have it where it's got like multiple layers going this way, multiple layers going this way, and then you have your holes going around it. Um, so that's why you usually do over one. Now, there are people that will do, they wanna make a big, uh, a pattern even bigger, and they'll go over two with their, um, with Ada. You can do it with different counts of Ada. You can do it with linen. You can do it however you want to, because that's the great thing about this. Do what you want to with it. Just know that if you if you make it bigger, whatever your pattern, it's gonna be twice the size. 
So it's going to be really big. If you're doing it on 14 count and it's already going to be big, it's going to be huge. But, you know, it is, it, it's, it's your baby. Um, now over two. So normally you're dealing with just these four holes. When you're doing over two, you're actually dealing with, there's, there's nine holes. So we have three, three, and three because you're dealing with four squares. So what you're doing is you're going from one and skipping all the way to here and from here all the way to here. But I'll show you that with my yarn. And I have my poor yarn. I was trying to do this earlier and I was, tr I was trying to talk myself through it so I could do this and actually show you guys without getting myself in the way. So we'll see if I learned anything from my, my example that I did earlier. Now, um, and when I did this one, I actually did it with a loop start because that's kind of my happy spot. I usually stitch with two because it's the easiest way for me to do it. And I will show you, actually, let me, let me show you how to do an easy way to do over two. I got a lot of yarn here, so hopefully it won't get too much in the way. One over two over four over six over nine. Yeah, you could, I mean, however big you want to get. So, so whenever you're wanting to do a loop method and you're using, and it, and it calls, your pattern calls for like two threads, you can do a loop method with three. I am not good at it and I'm not going to show it to you because it's more confusing than anything, but we can show how to do a, I'll show you also how to do it where you tuck your tail underneath too. Um, but to do a loop method, which is one of the absolute easiest, you're going to take your, your two ends. You're basically folding your, your floss over. Now, and also to keep in mind, when you're cutting your floss, there are different people that, that go different ways with their floss. Some people cut 18 inches, which is the recommended is 18 inches. Personally, I, I, I go for miles because that's just the way I do, especially if I've got a lot of colors. Um, traditionally I'd say go from the tip of your finger, at least to like your elbow or even to your shoulder. If you're going to be doing over two, I'd say from your fingertips to your shoulder to measure out your floss and then fold it over. That's a good, even amount. It doesn't, it's not too much. So it get, becomes cumbersome and it's still easy to manage. You will still have to, you're, you're going to have to add, you know, change out your needle from time to time. That's just the nature of it. Um, in this case, I have like the hugest eye of a needle. That's why I picked this big darning needle. Um, and I'm still not going to be able to load this, I can guarantee. So to do a um, loop start, you're going to want to take your two ends and put them through your needle. And you want to actually tug it down. I'm trying to do this on such a big scale. <laughs> you want to still have your tails here. You want to have your shorter than where your loop is because my my where it folds over is down here so the great thing about doing a loop method you can do it from the back or you can do it from the front whichever works a lot of people um i know a lot of the ladies that do linen and been doing some of this fancy work that have been doing it for a million years they will they're on a scroll rod so they don't want to flip it i I'm, i don't have that problem um but what you can do is you put your needle down through the top you kind of pull your floss through, but you don't want to pull your tail all the way through. And then you want to bring it up in the, the corner opposite across from it. My personally, the way I was taught and the way I've always done, my first leg is always going this way. And then my second leg, my top leg is this way, but that's just the way I've lot. If you want to do it the opposite way, more power to you. Do what makes your heart happy. So I pull this through and let's see, I've got my loop here. So I'm just going to stick my needle through here. And so I've got it to where it's pulled and I'm just going to tuck this back in to that same hole. And when I do that, I'm going to pull that knot in theory, I'm going to pull the knot to the back. <laughs> and so now it's on the back. Well, I always flip mine. That's easy. Yeah. How yeah. did you I know Shalina showed me a million times, but I don't understand how to do that. Like okay. I have my thread. Okay. okay my tail. Pull it out and we'll do it again. And I come up from the bottom. So when I've showed Crystal, I come up from the bottom. Yeah, you could do that too. You could yep. start here, come up, go, go down, down, and which catch way, the loop in the back. Which, and then you flip it over. But where is yep. your your loopy? I mean your tail. Loop right here. And then so the loop just, is at the top. This is actually the back of the project. 
Okay, mine right here. Okay, so here we show. Do you want me to show you how to do it from the front or from the back? From the back. From the back, okay. So here's the back where it says Danish and all this other stuff, that's the back. So I'm sticking my needle in. Stick my needle in. Uh-huh. And I pull and I pull and I pull until I have a little bit of a loop. And I, I use my finger, I hold on to my loop. Okay. Now I flip it over to the front, holding my loop right there with my finger. And now I'm actually, and for me, I, I automatically railroad. Railroad is a good way to keep your stitches in line. You put it in between your two threads like this and pull it in. And it kind of helps keep them straight. So I'm going to pull that top. Oops. Pull it down and I'm still holding on to the back. So now I'm flipping to the back. So that's, that's my back of my project. I grab my needle and here's my looping. So I'm putting this, in, let me see if I can get it to where you can see the light. Let me get the light. There we go. So I've got this going into the loop, I'm trying to look on there and look on here to make sure you can see me. And you just pull it through, you just pull it tight. I think my problem is not finding the loop, but making the loop on your needle when you, yeah. when you thread it. Yeah. You put, you, you put the two tail, the two, the two tail ends uh -huh. into your needle and keep them shorter. Your loop, your, the loop end where, where you make the turn needs to be longer than your short ends, than your, your, your two ends. Does that make sense? So look, so here's, Here's my two little ends right here. Uh -huh. I want them. This is really crinkly, so it's hard to tell. Pull this through. I should have gotten straighter yarn. Um, so here's my short ends here. And here's my loop right here. My loop is, is way down here. And these are shorter. The, the two so individual ends. So all four ends. threads are going to go through the needle. No. You're only going to have, it's only two. You've, you've literally just folded your, your floss in half. You fold your floss in half and then you take these two pieces and you stick them through the eye. Oh, okay. So then you have two on one side, two on the other side because it's going through. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then you want your, your two ends to be shorter lengths than your loopy end, which is way down here. So like, you probably can't tell. Yeah, I can't see it. Loop. Cause you're like, you're like, you're this yeah. Thing. Okay, I think I got it. Okay. So when you do that, I always like to snug mine down because it kind of keeps it good and tight. And then you're gonna go and do your other leg. So I'm going, I flip it back over to the front and I come up. I lay my stuff and I, like I said, I automatically railroad because I like to keep my threads side by side. I don't like getting them, see how they're all nice and pretty. Mm -hmm. I don't like them twisted. I don't like them all crinkly because it, it, it will affect how your project looks and it'll affect how it feels. Like when I did my, when I was doing my Viscornu, it's, it's one of those things when you get all your threads going in the right direction, you can do like this and you can feel if one is not complete and not going the right direction. Gotcha. Just one of those things. It's it's a very sensory thing. So then you're just going to come up. You're going to go and you're going to come up in your next little section. Sorry, this is so big. It's kind of hard to grab hold of. It <laughs> so you come back up and you're going to come back down in this, this hole that you went to before. And this is, this is doing what's called the English method. This is what a lot of people do. When you're doing um, over dyed floss, the fancy floss that has the variegation and stuff, if you want to get the most effect of the color change, you're going to want to go X by X because it's going to give you the best, um, the best variegation of that floss. It's going to look the best. And then you just go back down. That is quite literally all there is to cross stitch is make it a bunch of stinking X's on a piece of fabric. Um, now, when you're wanting to finish it off, what I like to do is I will run my needle back behind it. If it's only a couple of stitches, 
I'm I'm a little more overzealous with mine because I'm anal retentive that way. How I've got like this one, I will sneak it up underneath a couple others and make it and kind of tighten it down a little bit before I snip it because that's just me and my OCD. I like to make sure it's good and tight unless I've got a lot of, of lines to go across. So that is the English method. And we're about to do the Danish methods, which is where you go one leg, one leg, one leg, which is also called a tent stitch if you only do one leg. And then you come back. So like this is the first section, you're going A, B, and C. And then when you're coming back, you're, you're crossing back A, B, and C. So let's do this again. We'll do it down here. So let me come down here and do it a little bit easier. So I'm going to do my loop method again. So I come up, pull my little guy kind of tight, come through here and I stick it through my loop. And I'm going to pull it tight and then I'm good. So what I'm doing, now I'm going to turn down here and instead of, when I come through here, instead of going back up, I'm going to go this way again. I'm going to keep on going in this direction and finish that as many stitches as I want to do going across to help keep these. And it's really nice, especially if you've got a lot to do, because you can go over and do, this lets you travel a little bit better with some of your flat. Let's say you've got a long line of 20 stitches you need to go across, and then there's only two stitches down here. You could do your all the way across, do this and come back, and you can travel with your pattern wherever you need to go. Um, so now that we've gone these three stitches, so it's, we're going to come up and we want to go back the other way. We're going to come up here like this. And we're going to come back and finish our X's going back. So it, you know, it, it depends on how you want to do what you're most comfortable with. Um, I think it, it, in the first place, it's a good idea to, to do an X by X because you'll get a little bit more used to it and you have a better opportunity of not missing stitches and um, keeping them going in the same, the, your top leg and bottom legs going in the same direction. So does that make sense? So now when we were talking about, so that's, that's basically going over one. Now, if we were wanting to go over two, let me tuck this little tail right quick. Scissors, I have them somewhere. When I, these are right-handed scissors, but sometimes if I can pull my, my floss tight enough, when I've only got a couple of strands of floss, I can do it with my right hand. So let's do this one and we're gonna, we're not gonna do it as the um, loop method because I've just cut off my loop and I don't wanna re-try re to thread this. Um, and we're gonna do an over two. Actually, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough thread for this. Let's see if we do. What we're gonna do is we are going to come up like we have been. I'm, I'm just gonna go right beside this one. And I'm gonna come across for two. And when I, when I do this, I'm actually gonna hold this piece. Hold on, this is not gonna be long enough. Oh no, memento, poor favor. <laughs> and poor favor. <laughs> poor favor. Yeah. I tried to learn Spanish from a lady with a severe Southern accent. It did not work well. <laughs> it's poor favor. <laughs> poor favor. It works. Okay, so let me get this little puppy in here. I was trying, I was about to try to lick it like I usually do my floss, which is hilarious because yarn is not good to lick. Okay. Okay. Ooh, it's staticky too, which is really not good. Because I put it in a bag with a whole bunch of others. So, yeah. It's just like as if we were going to do a, um, regular over two. So instead of just doing the one X, I'm actually going up one. So you can do this one of two ways. You can count it like one, two, and then one, one, two, but you're going in, in this grid of nine because there's 
there's a total of nine holes here, three, three, and three, 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 three. So you're just going across it. So I'm gonna hop up here. And when I get ready to, when I'm doing this way where we're, it's the tuck method, I think is what it's called. I don't, I don't know if that's actually what it's, that's what I've always called is the tuck method because you're, you're tucking it in. This is so much easier when it's just washed. This yarn is a booger. <laughs> But I like to keep a little bit longer tail of it to cover a cover across a couple of stitches. So I'll kind of hold it down, kind of keep it out of the way because I don't want to pull it all the way through because I'm really bad about that. Sometimes I'll get and I'll try to snug the smallest little tail here because I'm a floss miser. And then I end up shooting myself in the, in the foot because I end up pulling it through. Um, so I just usually try to kind of hold on to my floss or let it kind of sit there, tug it down. Excuse me, ignore me. I just went to the wrong spot because I'm too busy talking and not paying attention to what I'm doing. I guess I thought I was doing another um, knot. Okay, so I'm coming up and I'm gonna go ahead and do my X. But when I did this, I like to go ahead and grab my floss and let it kind of catch it. Cause that's my first little bit of making sure my floss is gonna stay down. And I'm probably going to need it longer than that. My mental scale of how big this is versus regular stitches. <laughs> I'm used to like 36, 32, 36 inches. So I come over here, I do my little X. And when I come up to do my other end to come down, I want to make sure that I am catching this little line here of that tail, the floss under there because that will help anchor that so it doesn't pop out later. Mm -hmm. So then I'm gonna come down here and see, and see what, this is what I was talking about. See, I didn't railroad stitch and see how it twists like that. Mm -hmm. That looks so much better than that. Oh, cool. So it's a good way, you know, that's one of those things that you can see and you can kind of sometimes pull underneath, you can use your needle to kind of straighten it out and pull it through. Um, and sometimes your, your stuff will get, you, you know, your thread and stuff will get tangled. A lot of times I'll bring my stuff up really high and let my needle dangle to untangle. Um, some people will go and use their needle to, they'll, they'll bring it down like this and pull their threads apart. Um, you can even take it off your needle and, and, you know, whatever works best, whatever you're most comfortable with, but that's what will happen. Sometimes it'll start to tangle. So now we're here again, we're bringing our, our stuff across. And I'm just trying to make sure everything's tucked. I come across here and I tuck it. And then I'm coming across again. Oh, it helps if I go in the right hole. Come up. And I'm making sure that I'm grabbing the last of that tail. And that will help anchor that floss. You've already kind of got a good twist in it, but that'll help anchor it so it doesn't come out later. And then you just come down here and you do your X oh, and your X. And that's just basic. That's the basic of cross stitches, cross stitching. You know, you're just doing X over X. Keep your, keep your stuff straight. Um, some people will use, and I, I do it too. I use a, a laying tool when I'm doing some of my stitching and I'll show you. Let me back a couple back this one out and I can kind of show you. This is of course not to scale because you know this is humongous. Make sure this will work. Um, sometimes I'll use in this case, I just this is this is my purchase for my birthday. This is a glass laying pool. Is that not beautiful? Mm. It's made out of the uh, is it borsilica? Uh, it's like the Pyrex glass, but it's like a really pretty lavender. But what you can do is you can use it when you're stitching, you can kind of pull your stitches to see how it separates them a little bit, keeps them smooth. Mm -hmm. When you go to stick your, your floss in and it'll help keep them, just like with railroading, it helps keep them smooth. The stitches smooth going through there. Um, and so that they lay a little bit better because you can, you can kind of get them under there and use this like that to kind of straighten them. You can use the tip of it to kind of help straighten them out like I did with my needle. Um, there's also what's called a trolley needle um, 
this is what's called a trolley needle. I, there's different people use them different ways. I usually only use it when I'm working with a stand and I'm doing two handed. Um, I put it on my finger to where it's like this. And I will lay it down like this whenever I'm stitching, kind of like with the laying tool. And I'll lay it down flat and that kind of helps me smooth out my stitches to where they're flat. You just have to be careful when you're doing this that you don't poke yourself in the eye. You don't sneeze while you're wearing it. Um, luckily, I always wear readers when I, when I stitch because I would have had my eye out. But when you're done, you just finish um, tucking it. In this case, I have gotten this really, really short because, you know, that's how I do this. Is, I would have lost thread chicken here because I would have had no way to be able to tie this mm. off because mm -hmm. uh, I'm really bad about playing floss chicken. So at that point in time, I would have had to either back out my stitches or start with something different. And just I just run my, my floss underneath. And then I could pick up with a new one, a new thread with this, this piece. So any questions on the stitching part? Nope. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty simple with that piece. Now, if you're wanting to do a, a pin start, um, if you're doing a pin start, like if you didn't, if you're not able to do a loop start, like let's say you had three threads, we'll pretend like I have three threads on here instead of two. And, and we're doing, let's say we're doing on linen. So with linen doing the over two, a pin start is really easy. You are going to come up, instead of coming up in one corner or the other, you're gonna come up in the middle. And you're gonna have your tail, you're gonna have a little bit of tail, you don't need a huge tail. And you're gonna come down here to your corner. And then you're going to come back up in this far corner, if I can get this. And see what that's kind of doing is it's kind of going over your, your pieces there and go down in the middle again. Because what that's done is it's kind of helped cover that. Now I am going to go ahead and go over this one more time to get my, because that way you're right now I have an indent. Some people won't go over it again. It depends on how thick your floss is. Um, I usually, if I do a pen start, I usually like going it over again. I'll kind of snug that down come over and then I'll come over this way. And that's not coming out. That's perfect if you're doing like a, this is a pin stitch where you don't wanna have to have, if you don't, like I said, if you can't, if you don't have the option to do a loop and you don't really have a, you don't wanna have all this excess back here, you, you're still gonna have a little bit, but you can snug that off. So that's basically what you do with a pin stitch for that big mamba jamba. And then I'll usually just tuck it underneath this double layer here a couple of times and pull it through and pull it tight. And that should be, that should work pretty good. So let's see, let me do. So then we will do a pin stitch on our, on our Ada, <laughs> our faux Ada. If I can get this, I don't, I don't have enough darning needles to have this all prepared beforehand because you know, that would make way too much sense. <laughs> You're fine, okay. this is excellent. It is. It's wonderful. Okay, so let's pretend like we were talked about before, because how Ada, you know how it's got like the multiple mm -hmm. little threads in the square like that. So what you do, you you want to be able to poke this up through the middle of those threads, in the middle of that the actual square. Let me see if I have a. I don't have anything okay. larger than fourteen counts. So let me see if I can get one of these to see if we can zoom up. Zoom. Ooh. See, like it would be right in the middle of like one of those squares. See where I'm kind of pointing right there? Mm -hmm. It would be easier over here. So it'd be coming up in between. So you have a hole there, hole there, hole there, hole there. It'd be right in the middle of that X is what we're doing. Okay. And you can use your, use your needle to kind of press up in through there, or you can even go through the top if it's easier. Um, 
but you're going to go down just like we just did with this. We came up in the middle. We are going to pull this down a little bit and then I'm going to come back up here. Now with Ada, I don't usually go back down in the center with Ada because Ada is already pretty tight with that. I mean, you still can. A lot of times I'll just go to that far corner like that and then pull it back up. Oops, I need my little tail. And then come across. That's it. That's so easy. Yeah, it's, it's really easy. And then you just want, you know, you want to pull your tails kind of taut. But that's your pin start. So that's Why the basic. Why do you have to do a pin start? Well, let's say if, um, if you have confetti mm -hmm. um, and you're off in one little, if you only need to do one little X right here, you can do that. And then what I'll do is I'll go back through a couple of different ways. Let's say this is a confetti stitch. This is a standalone stitch all by itself. I come back through and I'll kind of come a couple of different directions. Okay. Okay. And pull it tight. And that way it's just that single standalone stitch. Okay. Hmm. I mean, you could carry your floss to another, to, you know, to over here and then to over here and then over here. Um, but the problem is, is depending on your fabric, um, let's say this is a white piece of fabric and I'm using navy blue. And when you go to finish this, you'll be able to see through that fabric to see oh, where wow. those stitches were. So that's one of the things to be cautious of. Um, if you're going to be doing, let's say you're working on light colored fabric and uh, you have a lot of black stitches and you have a lot of white stitches. My suggestion is to do your light stitches first and then come over the across the top of all those white, let's say these were the white stitches, come across the, all those white stitches to um, if you have to carry something across so that you don't see the colors. Because let's say I needed to drop down here and I needed to get, I needed to come over here so what I'll do a lot of times is I'll tuck underneath oh, I do travel and yeah. enter. And so yep. what I'll do is I'll do that. And then I'll come up here and do my stitches that I need to do. Yep. And by doing that, that's making it to where you're not going to see that because it's laying on top of those white stitches. And so it's not going to be seen through as easily. So do you do a uh, cross stitching, uh, cross country stitching as well? Um, I try not to. Okay. Um, because it just makes a mess. Sometimes it's easier to do that. Let's see. I think I've got some, I think this one had some cross country. Yeah. Like with this one, I had some, let me see if I can zoom down here, like here. Yeah. I did some, I try not to, but this was only a few stitches and I knew I could right. hide it in there. Okay. Um, mo and I did like down here, I, I did because I was too lazy to tuck it mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. really the difference, um, this is the same distance and I'd use the same amount of floss going across country. Normally I would have tucked it under some of these other um, pieces, um, but it's using the same amount of floss to do that than it would to anchor here and then to start anchoring and right. start here. So I kind of get kind of gauged to see how it's going to be. That looks so pretty, pretty on the back. On that when I was doing that. Yeah, mine won't look like that. Yeah, mine don't look like that either. Yours is so neat. Well, not my stuff is not always neat. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's something the back of your project doesn't freaking matter unless you got big old huck and lumps where it affects when you go to frame it. I have some that are a freaking disaster area. Um, let me find. I have some that are quite messy. Um, these are actually, these are not too terribly bad, but I have like here, I have like a big, I have a booger here. I have a booger there. <laughs> Is that what those are called? Yeah, that's what I call now them. we know. Boogers. <laughs> I call them fluggers because they're floss boogers. <laughs> if they're, if they're paint, it globs up, it's paint. They're pluggers for paint boogers. <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, it depends on when you're stitching. I mean, it's, Different stuff will be different ways. I mean, as you go through, I mean, um, this little guy, this guy was a total mess on the back, but I didn't care. Nobody needs to see your back and unless they're paying your bills or paying for your floss and going to buy that project from you, then it doesn't matter what the back looks like and they don't need to see it. It's none of their business. 
my uh, I have a question, a couple of questions for very okay. beginners like Robert. Uh, okay. What a um, I know Michelle started with a printed one, stamped stamp cross stitch. Would that stamp cross stitch is perfectly fine. It's nice. It's kind of it's uh, stamped cross stitch is kind of like the um, diamond painting of the cross stitch world because you're basically just putting the colors where it tells you. So is that when you first starting and not sure if you're going to like it, is that the best thing to do? I know a couple of people have already done it. You know, it depends. Honestly, it depends on, it depends on the person. I jumped off. My actual first was doing um, chicken scratch. It was more of an embroidery kind of thing, but it kind of similar. Um, and I started off that way. It was just easier for me, mm -hmm. but for some people, it may be easier to do that. Um, and I know there's a lady that comes to our, um, we do a, a yearly stitch retreat here in Dallas called mm -hmm. Stitching Texas. And this one lady is working on a piece that is 10 feet wide by four feet tall. Wow. Cross stitch. Good Lord. It is freaking insane. Um, yes. <laughs> wow. But she, she likes it. She says, I don't, she said, I don't enjoy counting cross stitch. Mm -hmm. It depends on, you know, it, it, cause you do have to count. This is counted cross stitch. You have to count mm -hmm. to get to where you need to be. If you don't want to have to count, use, use the stamped. It doesn't matter. Start, start with whatever you feel comfortable with. Start, honestly, my, my suggestion is to start with something small. They have the little kits that you can get at um, Walmart um, or Hobby Lobby or Michael's that are $10 or less. Some of them are even $5 or less. Try it, see, see what works. Always ask for help. You know, if you have a question, reach out to me. Say, hey, you can find me on, I'm on Facebook and freaking um instagram you know zoom me whatever um send me a message say hey i need help i know shalene is really good about helping she's got she's got a lot of knowledge and has been stitching for a long time she knocks this stuff out of the park but find what makes you happy you know if you want to do a bunch of big projects do a bunch of big projects if you want to do a bunch of small projects do a bunch of small projects if you want to make crap up as you go along do it this is one of the ones that I did. I made it up by my own. I found a picture of a stapler. And so I did it. I just kind of looked at this, this, the stapler and made it up as I went and had fun with it. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. And I just, I was like, crap, how do I need to do these letters? And I'm just like, oh, this looks good. And I just took a little bit of silver floss and went around the edge. And you know what? I am like the queen of untraditional finishing i do everything that you're not supposed to i hot glued this to a piece of fun foam <laughs> when one of my <laughs> traditional stitching ladies saw that she cringed <laughs> oh i bet but i, I don't know. care because my this is is this going to be an heirloom no but i love it it sits on my desk i mean and all i did was hot glue i, hot, I did a piece of fun foam hot glued it two pieces of fun foam right there and oh. then it just stands up on my desk you know what would be a great idea is doing a DIY crystal uh, finishing cross stitch. I was going to talk about that in a couple of months. Yeah, because yeah. I know a bunch of you are doing the Halloween gates, mm -hmm. Hill Hill, whatever. Some are doing it on fabric. Some are doing it on perforated paper. Uh, mm -hmm. Some, you know, that would be a cool one to finish because it's small, from what I can yep. see. Um, yeah, and I know Marissa uses a lot of um, Marissa uses a lot of. Um, it's the little um, here. I've got one. She'll use um, these little frames. Yeah, from the Dollar and, Tree. Yeah, and yeah. this is basically this is this uh, this was a kit. This was just a canvas, and actually, I've already ripped it. Um, and it had a piece of cardboard that I took fabric and did use double side tape to put on it. And then I just ruffled the edges or just pulled the edges a little bit and just double sided tape the whole thing. And it's just freaking seriously. Cute. Wow. I have seen some of the stuff she's done, Sarah. Finished. I know. It is just amazing. Marissa will I take it, wrap around and she will staple us. it onto the back. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can finish. Um, I've got. I grabbed a few of my finishes just to kind of show something something easy. I this one was fun, and I just painted. I grabbed some paint and I painted it, and then just put it in there. And I had a piece of 
heavy cardboard. I cut it to the size of the, the inner hoop mm -hmm. and just shoved it in there with a little, I've got a little bit of batting in there. So just it's not sewn or anything. Like I always see people sew the back of their hoop. Yeah, you can. I didn't have this one. I just shoved it down in there and it held it because it's thick cardboard. Okay. It was just a piece of cardboard that I had left over from something. Um, that works just fine. This is a little shadow box and I just put it in there. I'm probably going to put some little who diddies down here, something Alice in Wonderlanding ish, but it's nice because I can stand it up. This, okay, so this is just a piece of sticky board. Um, I've got the sticky side up and then I glued a piece of felt. I just tucked in the edges and hot glued a piece of felt onto the back with some ribbon. Mm. And this is a cheap little frame that I got at um, Michael's. And I put a piece of felt on the back because I hang it on my wall. And because it says best mom ever, and I have these little monthly ones. As you can tell, I haven't changed for the month. Oh, I did, a, I like I did my hangers long enough to where it'll cover over the best mom ever. And nobody knows. I like that idea. So, I mean, you can find different ways to do it. This one, this is another one of those, like that board. I put it on the board. I put a little bit of batting underneath there. I hot glued some oh, ribbon right. back behind. And I had this little guy that I got at Michael's. When I found it, this piece was all bent down. So I just bent it back and glued it. And that's my finish. Wow. Okay. I love that. There's, you know, there's, there's all my, so many ways that you can do it. Like I said, this, this is a simple, this is a simple little finish. Um, I think the finishing just, what sort just makes me anxious because I'm so afraid I'm going to screw it up and then screw up my project. But you're showing me that you can just do it. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of half hazardly. Yeah. This is just a regular frame and I put it in there and look at this. I have oh. not even fully finished it. I just put pins on the back because I'm lazy. Oh, I could do that. I just took that and left it to where I could still hang it because seriously, I'm a lazy finisher. <laughs> well, that would be me. That is and, excellent. And like I said, the one that I'm glad you showed the back. And Thank the one you. that Marissa did, this, like, like I said, this one's just double-sided tape. Marissa will take hers and she'll wrap the project around and she will yeah. use her stapler a stapler or a hot glue and put it around the edge and then she'll use a little bit of ribbon and hang it and and it's it's adorable this one is super simple yeah, it's it a little fabric over cardboard and this is just the basic canvas i could have painted the canvas i just decided not to and then i just double stick taped it's just double yeah. stick tape on there you can get those little ones at well at uh, dollar tree yeah i hate finishing because it takes so long sometimes i'd rather be stitching <laughs> yeah <me> yeah <laughs> true very true so um and there's and i was going to show you guys there's a, a some neat little tip the little who diddies that we do this is um this is one that marissa made me it's a piece of fabric this is or something and you're traveling keep this in your bag and you put your little orts or whatever and you can fold it up and toss it in your bag and then there's when you need to wrangle your fabric your excess fabric oh i love that. Yeah, I love these guys those. are the best i have those i just bought them I love and if them. you need smaller ones just tie knots in them i have ones like this has got two knots this has got a single knot so that goes for different size frames um and then one of my Amazing. favorite absolute is called a snag nabbit this one i put washi tape on it so i could find the thing but this little guy, it works with sweaters and stuff. It's got a shiny, sharp edge here. It's got a very good pointy. And this is a rough edge. That. And whenever you need to, like if you have like a stitch that's kind of bumped up a little bit, put it from the top going down and it will pull that stitch down tight and it makes it look so good. Oh, I like that. That's a good idea. Amazon. Yeah. Everything's on Amazon. Everything's on Amazon. Okay. Does anybody else have questions for Kim? I do have a quick question, but it might not be big. DIY 101. What is the sewing method? I heard Priscilla and Chelsea on the housewives talking about the sewing um, method all the time. Okay, the sewing method, it's it's a little harder to show on this because it's stiff. Yeah. But it's basically just kind of shoving your needle under your That's uh, it? yeah, you're just shove it's just a lot of times you can do it in hand. It's a lot easier yeah. to do in hand and you're just sliding your needle um like going from here and coming up here and going and then here and you just oh just, i see i'm trying it right just now doing it like that yeah you're just going and, and looping it under it's much easier on you know with your fabric this i can't because i can't bend yeah it. no 
Yeah. Uh, but, it, you know, it works. I don't like it as much because I don't feel like I have as control, much control on the way where my it goes. Stuff sits. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't, don't like using a, I don't like using stuff that hurts my hands and it is, um, it, it makes your fabric dirty. Yeah. So yeah, I, like I kind of, I do the sewing method, my stitches don't lay as flat as I like. Yeah, the, I don't, I don't like the way it looks, but some so, people are fast stitchers and that's the way they do. And it works just okay. fine. Yep. Thank you. I don't think Priscilla does that. I'm pretty sure it's just Chelsea. Yeah. Okay. And I'll hush now because I know Shalene wants, is going to show you guys how to do a French knot and I suck at French knots, so I'm staying out of it. <laughs> it was so funny when I asked her she would uh Stephanie asked me to show that because that's the only thing she can't do and Kim says no I suck at that <laughs> I know my strong suits and that is not one of them <laughs> oh can I tell you one quick thing that's really easy to do if you have a long line of stitches let's say you need to do like um, 20 across on your lines mm -hmm. if you will do half stitches like the one leg of stitches if you're doing like with regular dmc go through and do your one leg go in one direction and on your 10th stitch do a full x and then right. go back to doing just the half stitches oh. that'll let you count yep and if you it's can't good. do that because you're doing over dyed take um a thread, a, a, a needle with just a single length of thread, like a regular sewing and go down. You don't even have to really anchor it. Come up, go count 10, go down, count 10, come up, go down. That's a good idea. I'll run mine beside it, especially if I'm doing over dyed. Oh, I like that. All right. That's oh, you don't have to count all those stinking stupid stitches every time. Right. Especially if you got like 200 of them to go. Yeah. In what? Two of the two hundred of the same color. Yeah, that's what my uh, I've got like two hundred and fifty right now of my on my One Nation cell, my One Nation project. Oh, that thing is gorgeous. All right, Miss Shaleen, Stephanie asked, could somebody please show how to do French knots? Now Danielle yep. says you're an expert at teaching. I did teach French knots in one of the zooms. Um, you, so you're going to have some X's and I would run the floss under the X's before making the French knot, but you're going to come up through a hole. And this is how I do it. It's the easiest. And you wrap it twice. Wrap it. I got it once. Uh, once twice. I keep it tight with this hand. Keep it really, it's hard to That's do. That's my problem. Like, That's what I end up doing. I end up pulling it off every time. Yeah. Keep it tight. Bring that needle back down in that hole. Keep this length tight because as you come down. Oh. Can't see it. Oh, there it goes. let it go and there's your French knot. Mine just went through. <laughs> Do you put it back down in the same hole or like right beside it? On this, I did the same hole. Most of the time I try to go next to it because sometimes if you pull too tight, that French knot will go right through the hole. Yeah, mine just did. Yeah, so a lot of the times I'll go right next to it. So you come up through the hole. Wrap it twice. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> Wrap it twice. And then I'll go right down, right next to it instead of right in the same hole. Make sure you keep that a little tight. Keep pulling, pulling, let go. And there's your French knot. So it takes practice. Yes, it takes a lot of practice. Ooh, I, didn't... I did one. I did one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I had to learn to keep it tight by holding on to that tight while it was wrapped when I went down, because that way, it, I don't know, that's what works for me. Some people do it loosely and I'm like, no, because it, it looks like crap. So where are you wrapping it from the middle? 
Oh, see, yeah, I did one and the other one sucked. Um, it doesn't matter where you wrap it from. I try to keep it down close to the fabric. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I, cause this way it's tight and then you go down. Now I'm going down in a little bit next to it and I keep it, I just keep it tight with that one and pull through. Yeah, I don't know what I did. I jacked it up somehow. See, I can occasionally get one done, but after that, I'll never get another one done on that same project ever again. That's how I taught Danielle and a few others. And Danielle said she was getting them much easier. See, if I'm doing it on a frame, I, I'm better, I have a better opportunity of maybe making it ha happen. If I'm trying to do it in hand, forget it. Oh, okay. Well, I got one, but it's got a loop in it. <laughs> <laughs> it just oh takes God. practice. I always have extra fabric around. Practice on fab on an extra piece of fabric. So you only wrap it twice, right? Yep. Is that right? It looks like it. Yeah, this one has a loopy hanging out. That's what mine has. <laughs> and then the second one I did is an actual knot by going next Keep to getting it. the loopies. <laughs> so ba basically, you're you're saying that your knot has a uh, a hernia. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and for some reason, they keep getting bigger. <laughs> and I and to answer one of Robert's questions, and I don't know if Kim uses this to find the center. Once you find the center, Kim used a piece of floss. I have one of these pens. It's a Pilot Frixion pen. You can yeah. mark your center with it, and it comes out with a blow dryer or a heat gun something that's hot see i never have luck with those because that's when they don't come out because that's just my luck oh really but yeah but i mean i it's, i can have 10 people beside me do the same thing and theirs will be fine and mine will be jacked up that's oh. just the way my world works <laughs> now i don't know what the difference is between a colonial knot and a french knot a colonial knot is similar, but I think it, it does, they do something different. I can't remember. I can't do that one either. No, I don't know how to do I just that. use I a bead on there. That's, that'll be the one time that I'll use a bead, like for eyeballs or something. That's what I, I have to do thinking. French knots. It's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for eyeballs, because they'll never be the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I had to do eyeballs, sometimes mine don't come out exactly the same. One eye might be just a little bit bigger than the other. Mine will be like a pirate. He'll have one yeah. eye and I'll have to do a patch on the other. At least that's what it looks like. But that's how I do my French knots. I just make sure I keep it a little tight so it stays wrapped around the needle tight. But you were able, then, Kim, you were able to do uh, finish that spider thing for Marissa. That looked yeah, that awesome. Was, that was, I think that was beads. Was it? X's. I don't remember. Um, I think it was beads that I did on there for the body, but yeah. But do y'all have any other questions or? No, nope. I did a great job. Though. That was amazing. I learned oh, the piece. And I was going to tell y'all one of my favorite tools is, and I don't remember where I saw it, this little thing, this, and you can get like a bunch of them. It, it's like a mascara wand. You can get them pretty cheap. These are like the best things if you have to frog. Oh, because it picks yeah. up all the the flosses and if you have like critters that leave fab floss that leave uh, fur works really huh. great yeah i need one of those where do you get those um i got them on amazon i got like a pack of 100 for like six it's just a mascara wand is that what yeah, it's just a little mascara type wand okay but they are fan freaking tastic and that way if you break them it's no big deal but i gave them to all my stitchy group <laughs> Uh -huh. And they were like, what is this? And I told them and they're like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing. I usually keep two or three around because I've, I, when I've frogged and I'll kind of go over, I'll just change one out and then I'll grab another one uh -huh. because I'm already ticked that I have to frog. The, so. They used to make something like that for cross stitchers for yeah. frogging. What and is it called? It's just a mascara wand. And like, um, Shalane was talking about the um, 
Frixion pens, they have also have the, the highlighters. Mm -hmm. I get a multi-pack of them. Um, and it's got like this rubber end that'll make it, it'll make it go away. And I'll use that yeah. on some of my patterns and stuff. Yeah. This and they're has really a great. rubber end too. Mine has a rubber end of your race too. Yeah. They're fantastic. Yeah. And that makes it nice when you need to, um, like when you need to mark your pattern and then you realize you screwed something up, you can erase it. <laughs> Cause you're like, oh no, I didn't do that after all. So see how it's erasing from there. Let me see if it'll zoom. Come on, zoom. And then it just erases. Oh, I got to get some of those highlighters. Yeah, Amazon. Yep. Boy, Amazon, Amazon is going to make money. They off. don't work really well on the shiny paper as well, but regular paper, they work well. Yeah. I always make a working copy of mine. Hmm. But there's, awesome. if you, you know, one of the other things that's really great to have um, when you're stitching. Um, I know what a lot of diamond painters use them as uh, cover minders, but this is a, this is one of my favorites. That somebody gave me, it is a needle minder. I love stabbing things, <laughs> but I love that it's all flowery and, and, and everything. I thought that was really cute, like um, but there's, there's all kinds and they're great because they will hold, um, they're magnetized. So your needle will stick to it. Let me see if it'll, yeah. So your needle sticks to it. It makes it nice. The, in this case, this one is a fabric one that somebody did and it was stitched and they just put a magnet on the back side. That's cute. So they're really nice to have. And if you're using these little keepers too, those work really well as needle minders as well. I mean, that's where it can get to where you can have uh, the hobby be as expensive or inexpensive as you want. Um, I mean, there's always the little fancy foo-foo stuff like my my cutesy little scissors. Mm -hmm. um, I got these like a five pack of different colors of these for like 20 bucks. Um, and they're really good and sharp, but you can find uh, Marissa use a lot of the ones that you can get at the Dollar Tree. They're short little scissors. They cut really well. They don't have as much of a point, but whatever works for you that will make things easier for you. Is it, do are it. these the ones that she put in our bag last year? Yes, yes, yes. Those pink candle ones. Yep. And they're fantastic. I mean, and you know, I, I keep a little goodie box. This has got like a lot of my little stuff. Um, this is another one of my, my keepers. I just, I had some felt. I'm, I was trying to make a better version of it. And as you can tell, I didn't do a very good job, but I would put this on the ring with my floss and I put a little snap <laughs> and that way I could put my flosses that my little orts or whatever, or if I'm working on a piece and I don't want to put it back on the bobbin, I can just wind it up and put it right in there and it'll stick really well. Um, there's counting pins. This is one of them that I got and it's not real sharp on the end, but you can use it to count your, your, oh, where you're needing to go. I want to get one of those. Insert it on your fabric. Yeah. I need that too. And then if you really want to get in there, I got these in my black needle society box. They are chopsticks, finger chopsticks. So you can eat while you stitch and not get your fingers dirty. Yeah. <laughs> And of I course, use, those are in my oh, kit. Tweez. I use tweezers. <laughs> yeah, I do too. These are like freaking awesome. I think you can get like five of them for like 10 bucks. But yeah, so you can stick it. And I, they even showed on the picture on Amazon that you could do it while you're typing. So you can do whatever you want to. And then just reach over, grab your chip and put it in your mouth. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. But yeah, I mean, I keep little, I have like a snag nap it in here. I always keep washi tape. I have a tape measure my needles a mark. marker i always keep super glue these are one of the best okay. seam rippers because it's got this little rubber end which works really good and you do know if you're ripping your seams you always want to put the ball part down really yes I ball part down that. because that way you don't rip your fab your fabric it helps open, ah. open it up I did not uh, know that yep you can use these little guys these okay. little needle threaders these okay. don't work as yeah. well you have to be kind of careful with them because they will pull out the plastic yeah, they, break. Again. Um, they will break pretty easy I, a lot of times i'll put a little bit of super glue i'll buy them in bulk there's also the small metal ones yeah i like the metal ones yeah i like the metal ones too and i have all kinds of needle minders a lot of these are from tammy marissa's sister tammy um, this one's just a i mean you can turn anything into a needle minder this Yep. It's a Scrabble piece. 
Isn't that well, that's cool. cute? I got a whole bunch of them Scrabble pieces. Uh, that's what I was just thinking. So, I mean, and I always keep like tweezers. Tweezers are very handy to have in your, if you have like a random hair, mm -hmm. dog hair, cat hair, or fuzz to be able to pull your stuff out. And this stuff yep. is great. Stitcher's lotion because it's not greasy. So yep. it's nice to have uh, because you're not going to get, it's, it's more of a water-based. It takes a little bit longer for it to dry on your skin but it's not greasy and it will work, yeah. work really good with your they hand. They have this too. It's called gloves in a bottle. This yep. is made for cross stitching mm -hmm. and buttercream is the other one that's really yeah. good. Because yeah. you don't want to have anything that's really um, greasy. So your fabric, it's not transferring your fabric. And I try to, even if I'm stitching with like my small hoops and stuff, I always fold the fabric around to the front so that if I'm going to be touching it, it's not going to be directly on the front of my fabric. Um, cause I'll use like on my, where's one of my hoops? I love that piece. Oh yeah. I'm gorgeous. I know. I haven't made it very far lately. I haven't, I've been working on it a little bit at work, just doing the lines. Um, but I don't know, you might be able to tell on this top. Let's see if I can get it to see how like it goes like a few and then there's a dark spot and then a dark spot and dark spot that's when I was going I went 10 and there's my x 10 10 stitches and then an x 10 and then an x yeah that's, that's how I was good. keeping up with where I was going yeah I do um, that but whenever I whenever I stitch um especially using like these I will um put this in here and whenever I I will roll my fabric where I am not touching the front of it because I don't want to discolor my my threads I will hold it like this so that I'm not touching the front of my fabric and ah. that way I'm not getting my white stitches dirty or anything like that because I'm touching the back of it not the front so that's something that's kind of important to do um do you want me to show how to do some of the putting them on the cue snap yes please okay so this is just a, a small cue snap um this is one of my little guys there's a couple different ways that you can put fabric uh, and do your, I personally like to stitch in the well. This is not in the well with this one. Let me get, I got stuff, I got stuff all over my desk. This is on the top this is where it's rolled up over. I personally, usually when I run stitching, I only did it that way so you could see more of the stitch project. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, like if you're going to be starting from the center, I've got a pretty good idea. This is my center. I usually like to start with the pieces that are going to be like a lot of times I'll take a part an eight by inch and or an eight by eight and an 11 by 11 and make an eight by 11 frame. Um, but I do sometimes keep these smaller ones because they're pretty handy too. I like starting with the longer sides of my fabric. How I've got more up here um, because it's easier. My first one is just a guesstimate and eyeball it and I just put it on there. And then I like to do it too in the well. Uh, yeah, Some and I will, I will, I will stretch it. Ooh, that way I can get it good and tight. And then I do my shorter sides. I kind of get it as taut as I can. And if it, if this was a little needed a little bit more oomph, I could. If I, these were not holding as well, I would put a piece of felt underneath there, like I had talked about before, just to kind of help keep it tight. Um, I am, I'm now starting to learn to stitch in the well. I've always yeah. done it the other so, way. So yeah, this is top stitching, which is nice because you can see what you're doing. Yeah. Now, when you're stitching in the well, the nice thing about it, and see, and I would have to tuck all this back. Um, the nice thing about stitching in the well is when you're stitching in the well, you can stitch all the way to these corners because when you get ready to finish off to tie off your ends, you can flip it off and it's already flat. You're, it's easier access to be able yeah. to get to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just an easier way to do oh. it. Um, and you're, so you're stitching down in that well because this has created a well. And that's where, um, like with this, this would be really great to have a grime guard to hold this back. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I, or did I bring a grime? Oh, here's one that's got a grime guard. Although it's not tucked in here very well because um, I was fiddling with it the other day. A grime guard is nice. This is just a piece of fabric that's got elastic on both sides. And I've kind of tucked this back because it was kept on getting in the way over here. 
I use, this is one of those little wire ties. I just wrapped it around several times and it works perfect except for when oh, it's a novel out. idea. Yeah. And then I have like my excess fabric. I have it tucked underneath there just to get it mm -hmm. out of the way. Cause I didn't want to do any of the magnetic. So this one is in the well, but it's with, it's kind of holding on to my extra fabric. And then I've got all my stuff and you can do these in different color fabrics. You can do it with a fat quarter. I don't usually suggest doing a fat quarter. Cause when you get around to doing your seams, you have to do two pieces together to make it long enough. And it's, it's not fun. Um, but it, it's nice because it'll hold your excess fabric. But if I needed a little bit more control with it, I could grab one of these little guys, say this is getting a little out of hand. I could put that underneath my grind guard or on top of it and it holds my stuff back. And Danielle makes the grind guard. She puts a little button on it. So oh. I put that on the top at the top. So I know mm -hmm. that's the top of my pattern. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah so I saw some of hers. She has a flamingo one that I desperately need. I need to get with her. <laughs> yeah, get a hold of her. But yeah, oh, speaking of flamingos, I have to show this off. Is oh this my god, that is so pretty! And I look at the little shrimpy. Oh and my god! One of the girls from my stitchy group made this for me for my birthday. Oh, I actually wow. have a big bag that goes with it too, but it's over, it's over across the way. But I just the fabric is gorgeous, and it, the true color is not coming through. It's actually this is more of a darker blue here or a, like a tealy color. It's, it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, little stuff like that makes such a difference. And you can play with it to see what works best. If you like stitching in the well better, if you want to stitch on top, um, if you, whatever kind of hoop you want to use or fabric you want to use. Um, well, actually I showed you guys how I did that with One Nation, which I don't know where I did with it. It's somewhere. It has some, I, you guys should see the mess that I have over here right now because it's, it's insane. But so I do like stitching in the well with this one because it's just easier. And one of the nice things about the spring hoop is because it's easy to pick up and move. Let's say I get down to this one little section. All I have to do mm. is pick it up, scoot it over a little bit, and scoot my needle minder over, and then I'm ready to go with my next. That one. is so much easier than those other I ones. Those yeah. I'm well, because really for this, a Q-snap is not really effective, but it also depends on what's comfortable in your hand. This yeah. is a good size and weight for my hand. A wooden hoop does not work as well for me. But this like does that. keep good tension. You can make it really good and tight. Um, but it's it's more versatile for me because I keep this in a small bag. This whole thing gets put into this bag here. It's a right. little um, drop bottom, but I fold it up. Actually, well, actually not this particular bag. It's in my, this, this one. But um, I can put all my stuff in here. I've got my flosses. Actually, I have, this is this is my original old hoop that I've had for 20 something years. Oh, so, uh, but you know, always, I always keep like a, several of these small bags. I have bigger bags and I have them to where I can grab them on the go. I have a pair of my, my readers. I'll keep readers in there, a pair of scissors, my flosses, um, like this one, I'm just doing lines on this. So I'm not worried about taking the pattern with me. Cause I know that I have just a crap ton of lines to do. Right now, I'm, I'm just trying to fill those in, and then eventually I'll start back with the lettering. But this is from here to over here is 250 stitches across. Wow. And so then I've got to turn back in. When I get ready to my next one, i got to add this rest of this and do all the rest of the stars. <laughs> so I'm going to be working on this one for a while. Somebody was trying to see if I could, they're like, are you going to have this done in time for the October retreat? And I'm like, uh, yeah, no. Because <laughs> I started it last year at October retreat. So maybe I might get lucky and, you know, I doubt it. So, but anybody else have any other questions that you can think of? I am. I tried to give you guys information, but not too information, too much to blow your minds, but enough to, to enable you. There are a lot of designers out there. Um, just like with diamond painting or anything else, there are a lot of people that steal designs. So be mm -hmm. cautious and aware. Um, but there's a lot of great designs. Unfortunately, with everything going on with the Ukraine, Etsy has knocked out all of the Russian designers. And that kind of breaks my heart because some of my favorites are Russian designers. Um, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with that over time because Etsy and PayPal have both dropped them. Um, yeah. As if they didn't even exist, they archived their entire. Budget. It's sad though because it's not it's not their fault. What's going no, on? No, it's so, Putin. It's it's not. It's yeah. not them. 
It's not. Um, and I still need to make a living, but, um, right. you know, there's a lot of great designers out there. A lot of stuff you can find on Etsy. There's a lot of free patterns. There's a, so many cross stitch groups. I counted the other day. I am in 73 cross stitch groups. Oh my Lord. Gosh. I'm in a lot okay, of, but, of them all. Um, I don't, I just skim through. And if I see something yeah. I like, I go on there. There's a few that I go to specifically like my local Dallas groups. Um, but I just kind of flip through. I, it keeps my Facebook feed full of cross stitch. So it makes me happy. Yeah. Um, but there is, there's tons of stuff. Um, there's, there's so many things out there. So many great designers. A lot of people starting out, um, make up your own pattern. Feel free to make up your own pattern. There are sampler books where I have a bunch of sampler motifs and you can take those and make your own pattern out of them. Yep. Um, use graph paper, use any of the many programs out there to do what you want. Um, there's as small or as large of a project as you could possibly want out there. Just have fun with it. Awesome. That's all I got. Okay, you guys. Anybody else well, have questions? Thank you so much. Um, no. Yeah. Thank you, Kim. Oh, thank you, Kim. Welcome. That I was enjoyed amazing. it. it really I was trying is. to figure out how I was going to talk for two hours about cross stitch, and I'm like, oh crap, this is one of my favorite subjects. So. Been over two hours, and you've done awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you, Kim, for teaching it. us French knots. Now, yeah. if anybody, this is going to be on my YouTube channel. That's why it's being recorded. If anybody in YouTube land has any questions, I will put my uh i don't want to give out their information unless they ask me to um, my well they can ask they can reach out to me on instagram i am crafting for sanity 13 and it's the word for for crafting for sanity 13 um you reach out to there or um yeah other than that i'd say yeah I really kind of don't want to give out my Facebook because no, I don't that's fine. eventually one of these days, if I can ever get my crap <coughs> together, I may do a floss tube, but um, I've been talking about that for two years and it still hasn't happened because my world is still crazy. So you're, you're fine. No, that's why I didn't want to give anything out without permission. Um, y'all, most of y'all know how to reach Shaleen. Um, and if you have any questions, my information is always in my description box when I remember to put it there. I will go back and put it there when this uploads. Um, if you have any questions, message me. I'll send the message to them. We will answer it and get back to you. Yes, definitely. Um, we will, Shaleen and Amanda, we're going to have to adjust my one-on-one schedule because okay. I think that was an awesome idea to see if Kim, when she has time, um, see what day she has time and she could show us how to finish some of these projects we're working on. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. So I think that would be perfectly. Hi, Deanne. We're right at the end. Hi, Deanne. You really need to go back <laughs> and watch. Of course. Of course, I will. I'll watch the replay. Uh, so y'all have a wonderful day. And if you have any questions, go ahead and message me and I will get back to you. Thanks. Bye, y'all. Bye.